Hi guys, and welcome to a little tutorial thing. Uh, this is actually just a simple uh, kind of tip thing about paint or sight, and uh, I just, I guess, kind of its uh, features and such because I want to start doing tutorials. And I thought, well, well, the best way, I guess, to kind of start is let's do just one about paint or sight because I don't know. A lot of people ask me, like, what program I use and stuff, and uh, I, f I feel like Paint Sight is like very widely used, and I quite like it, so yeah. Uh, we'll just start with this, and then uh, I don't think I'll be going in uh, to this video, but uh, the next video I might make might be going in uh, to brushes. Um, basically what all of these things mean, like blending, delusion, persistence, etc, etc, yada yada. And it might be like a two-part thingy. Um, where I also explain uh, the brushes that I use and stuff. Uh, so basically, the way I want to, um, the way I want to, kind of make this uh, tutorial series thing is I kind of want to divide it in the program, like Paint or Sai, and then just go into the actual like drawing stuff, like, and then like maybe coloring in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So you know, this is Paint Sai. Here on the side you have like your navigator and then this on the side you have uh, like navigator, paint effects and layers. And then on this side you have brushes and your color dilly dads. You can, you can switch these around by going to window and then show layer panel to the right or show color thingy to the right and then just kind of, it, it just depends on your preference. Uh, I like to have it like this. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people have it opposite but I, I personally prefer this. Um, so you have your navigator, which you have these dials that do zoom and then angle. You can reset them here, and then you can also do that here on these two. Uh, you also have these at the top as well, so I don't really like to have my navigator turned on. It's just I accidentally turn it on every now and then, so it's like, whatever. Um, here we also have paint effects. Uh, what paint effects does is so it gives the entire canvas a texture if you put it on texture mode and it gives uh, as, as well like uh, everything you're drawing uh, on the effect. It's, it's only got one effect. It's, it's fringe. So uh, let's go into the texture first. So let's just uh, lay down something quickly here. Got some colors and let's put it on this one. You see uh, the scale obviously uh, like this little dial here, it's how big you want, I guess, the texture to be on the uh, thing, on your canvas. And then this one here is for the um, transparency of it. You see, uh, it's at 100, so it's like, you can see it a lot, but the more you go down, the, uh, the opacity, I suppose, is lowered. So that's for the opacity. And then with effect, which I've seen a lot of people use to kind of get uh, a more of um, uh, a watercolor effect, and I quite like it myself. If if you see on the side here, uh, in comparison to when it's off, there's there's this like fringe, you see. And a lot of people yeah use that to get like a sort of watercolor effect, and it it mostly works with things that are, have like a harder, more defined edge. You see here with like something that's more blended out, you can't see it as much. You can like very slightly see it, but you can't see it as much. Uh, the width is obviously how wide you want the 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 uh, fringe to be. Again, this dial here is for let's just put up uh, the opacity of the fringe, how intense you want it to be. I generally like to keep it around a one to at uh, I'd say four maximum, and even four is a a bit much for me personally. Um, one or two is 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 I'd say uh, pretty good uh, for for this uh, layer mode. Uh, next we have. Uh, I mean, effect, sorry. Next we have the actual like layer modes and this kind of thing over here. So we have layer modes, which uh, the options that we have are normal, multiply, screen, overlay, luminosity, shade, luminosity and shade, and binary color. Next we have the opacity of the layer. So if we just do that. Um, oh, why is that set on that? Um, so we have that and then we got, you see, the opacity of the layer. Then we have these things called preserve opacity, clipping group, and source selection, and we'll go into those later. And then we have these down here. Uh, this is new layer. This is a vector layer, uh, I'm pretty sure. So you can just kind of do like straight lines and do this and that. And no matter how much you increase it, like the line quality stays the same. So like 
um, you see the line quality when you zoom in is pretty much the, uh, like it's it's good because you know it's it's pretty standard. But then when you uh, increase it, oops, or rotate it or whatever, uh, it it stays the same. You see the the, the lines stay the same, so it's it's a vector. Uh, but if you do it with like a, a normal layer, let me just uh, so if zoom in here and see this line over here. No, that's kind of so you see this line here. It's like it's uh, like the vector layer, but if you increase it or rotate it, it goes down in quality. You see? It just goes down in quality. So that's what that is. Uh, this is for folders. Um, and then you have these at the bottom. You got your little trash thingy. Then you got this erases everything on the, on the layer. And then you have this is merged down, but you keep the current layer. And this one is merged down the layer into the next layer. So it just disappears and merges completely into it. And then you have this one, which uh, anything you have in the folder, you just merge it into one layer. And going back to the color modes, let's just uh, get something down here. Let's use a blue. Here we go. So the first layer mode is multiply, which uh, as kind of the name kind of states, it sort of multiplies the, the color on top of whatever you're doing. You see uh, on the outside, it's the, it's the same color. You see, it's the same color, but uh, if once it goes on something else, it kind of, uh, it, it makes it a, a shade basically and a lot of people use this for for shade and including myself screen is uh it makes it lighter um i don't really like using screen because it's uh, it's a very weird thing i don't exactly know how to use it um then you have overlay which is kind of like a it's good for um i suppose just kind of uh warming or like warming or cooling down kind of a filter thing uh it just makes colors like really really um it makes colors really nice from my experience especially if you're going with like uh so let's say we have like a green or something and then you want to put like i don't know some purples and stuff and it's like i don't know it just it ends up looking nice um depending on what colors you use it's it's, a, it's also a little strange. Screen and overlay are very, very strange, but I prefer overlay a lot more. Um, it doesn't deal too well, in my experience, with darker colors. Um, I mean, it does, but it, it, it doesn't. It's really a sort of weird kind of filter layer mode. And then we have, oops, uh, then we have luminosity, which is kind of the better version of screen, where it just makes everything um, really bright and, and like, super whoosh and I use this mostly uh, for effects and stuff of the similar sort um, it's not a luminosity layer it's uh, very nice and uh, it doesn't work well with dark colors you see I'm using a black here but it's 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 basically just not doing anything but if I put a normal you can you can see it yeah with black you can't see anything usually you want to stay in the lighter range of colors even though sometimes some of the darker colors they you can see them but they're it's a little strange and it's not like it's luminosity effect and also um, in comparison to like a uh, a screen or a normal layer um luminosity has like this this nice glow around its lines you see how these just kind of go and fade out to like a white like you can see it, it grades out to white this this just uh, has like a very very light and and, and bright kind of kind of thing i think you guys get it uh next we have shade which is like multiply but like a lot more intense this doesn't fare well with uh light colors so it's the opposite of um it's the opposite of luminosity you see i'm putting down a white but it's not showing anything put it on a normal layer and you can see it um shade does really well with uh, darker colors i personally don't like using it just because just like luminosity on the side it doesn't go like a normal uh layer would or anything but it's got like this really uh intense uh it's just it, it's very intense it's the opposite of luminosity and luminosity uh, for it uh, for it to be intense is in my personal opinion quite nice it, it matches but these really dark kind of intense um shades uh especially if, if you're using i guess sort of normal things they can get very uh uh it really depends how, how you use it but it can it can ve get very uh i don't know sort of attacky and kind of it just it just gets really ugly really fast so um, I prefer multiply just because it's it's base it's it's the better version of shade I feel like luminosity is a better version of screen 
but shade is definitely not superior to to multiply i mostly use these if i need like really uh dark blacks with like a maybe like a blue tint around um for like space effects and such but besides that i don't i don't really like using it it's just it's so intense as as you can see Next, we have Luminosity and Shade, which is actually one of my favorite uh, layer modes because it combines both Luminosity and Shade. So it makes like bright colors really intense, but it also makes dark colors um, really intense as well. So you can have like a nice blend of both of them without, you know, because, you know, Luminosity can't register darker colors and then Shade can't register lighter colors. And this is just like, you know, best of both worlds. <laughs> And then we have binary color, which kind of makes everything like a uh, pixel. I'm not entirely sure what this does. Um, no idea. And then like, I, hmm, I have no idea. Like, what is this? This is interesting, I guess. But at the same time, I have no idea what this is. Do different colors affect you? Uh, hello? And you can see a nice red and black, and, but only when the opacity is down. And you know, look, you can't even see purple. I don't know what this layer mode is. I have no, cl no clue. No idea. It just makes things weird and pixely, and it, it, it works really strangely. So, you know what? I'm just gonna you're just going to leave that. Okay, so now we have Preserve Opacity, Clipping Group, and Selection Source. So Preserve Opacity, what that does is you can't draw anything outside of of like uh, the things that you've already drawn on the layer. So you see, I'm 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 painting outside of this weird blob shape thing, but it's not showing up. You see, so it just colors in this, and this is actually what I use to change the line art color. So I'll have the line art color on top of something, right? So let's say I got like this person here, right, and they're just kind of there. <laughs> And so to change, to change line art, I press preserve opacity and then I select whatever color I need. And then I just, oh, let's make it a little lighter. And then I just carefully put it in where I want it to be. And then clipping group does something similar to that, except it, uh, it just makes everything on top merge, or not merge, but clip onto whatever is below. But unlike uh, preserve opacity, it's actually there. It's always there, but you just can't see it because it's on clipping group and i also use this sometimes for a uh, for more complicated um or thinner uh line art because sometimes i'll lose the color that i'm doing a certain part like let's say i'm doing the skin and i don't do all of the skin um like i don't change all of the all of the places that i need to with the right color and then i could color pick it from there but it, there's a chance it'll be diluted especially if it's uh if the line art's very thin because Wait, let's let's draw like a thick line and then a thinner line. So I can try and color pick from here, but it won't give me the exact color. You see, sometimes it's darker, sometimes it's lighter, and it just it's you you don't get the you don't get the same color, which can affect how how the color is portrayed on the line art, and it just won't look like the rest of the thing. But with uh with clipping group. You can just kind of unclip it because you've just kind of put on a blodge there of the general area where where the where the line art is and then you go like okay this is my color and you can just you know continue on to use it and um layer modes actually like apply to these and you can't really do that with like line art like you can but it'll apply to everything below the line art whereas this just applies to anything that it's being clipped onto so you know that's that's pretty handy uh, next we have selection source, which is, okay, so let's just make a bunch of layers here, right? And let's, let's do a doodle of some person and they're like, hey, right? And then let's, let's give him some, let's give him some hair. And then here's an ear. Sure. Now we're going to put the, uh, we're going to put the hair. As you can see, it's like just a it's just a full thing. It's like a proper line art thing, um, 
and we're gonna put it on clipping, uh, not clipping group, uh, selection source. And then what that does is if you put like your wand tool or your bucket tool on selection source, it'll only, so how you, you can do it like on working layer, all image, and that will just apply to everything that's on your image. But if you only do it for selection source, then it'll only apply to the thing that's on selection source. So here we go. And it's um, like, I've, I've just colored in where the hair is. And so it only applies to here. You see, it's it's ignored, it's ignored um, this line art. But it's it's only applied to this to this one. If I were to just do it on working layer, then anything on this layer, it it just you know, it doesn't apply to anything because there's nothing on this layer. If I do if I do it to all image, uh, it'll apply to this entire blob because it's on the blob. If I click outside the blob, then it'll go kind of weirdly around the blob, and that's that. And those are those modes. Uh, these masking things, I'm not entirely sure how to use them, so I'm just gonna leave them be. And then going on to this side, we have our color wheel. Uh, we have our red, green, blue, RGB uh, little dial things. We have hue and saturation, and then um, I don't know vib vibrancy. I don't I don't know what the V stands for. Uh, and then we have these things which uh, what you can do is you can get like two colors on whatever and then it creates this nice little um, Gradient between them and it's it's a good blender thing and it's kind of what I use for some of my fusion shit Like I don't, if I don't know what color they are then I'm like, okay, well, I'll just you know and then here you have like swatches and stuff so if, if you use a color often, but you, you don't want to like make a little uh, like separate file for it or you don't know how to get it uh, like all the time or you have like characters certain characters and you're making a comic or something and you can just like you have okay so whatever you have in here you press like you right click and then you press set and then it's just there and then you have this little uh, pad thing and you kind of just it's like a little you know a little scratch pad thing blending pad whatever you want you have your undos and redos here. It's separate, and it the, when you do shortcuts, it doesn't apply to here. It applies on this. I think brush shortcuts still apply, but you can like Control Z, and you gotta you gotta change your your brush size outside of it. So it's just it's just for like, yeah. It's it's kind of like this. You can kind of like just put colors on if you're using them, and you can just you know keep doing it if you don't like putting it on your canvas. But I don't really use that. Also, you can have like erase it all like that. Um, next up, okay, so we went over the swatch. Uh, this I explained it. Uh, hue and saturation, kind of, you know, it's just pretty self-explanatory. You go with hue. There's, I guess, certain sa saturation, and then this, this goes al like this goes um, horizontally, and then this goes vertically. Uh, yeah, Let's do that. Um, yeah, pretty standard thing. And then this this controls these are the like color thing it controls like more red or more blue and blah 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 blah. You kinda know. I don't really like using this either too much. I just kinda stick with the normal color wheel and the color wheel comes in like three modes. Uh you have this one which is like the standard paint side color wheel. And then you have this HSL one where it's it goes completely up uh top to white and then bottom. It's kind of like a nice gradient, and then in the middle here is where your most saturated color is. And then you have uh, this one, which is very similar to this one, except you can see here, uh, it's it doesn't go as saturated. It goes to a, a lot more desaturated um, kind of thing, where it's, it's kind of going in like this sort of a pattern, where it's like dark and then more saturated. And then you got white coming in from here, whereas this, uh, this one is... Here it's all saturated and then it kind of dilutes out like that way. This is more of like a, like a this sort of shape, like a diamond, but then it coils. And then this one is just that way. If that makes any, any sense at all. I, I, I like to, to stick to, to just like the standard, standard one. And then here obviously we have our brushes, which I said we'll go into another video. And then here are our just kind of normal selection tool things. This is a, a rectangle. Um, to add like more rectangles, your default, um, the default uh, shortcut should be shift, and then you just kind of 
you just kind of drag you hold it and you drag it along and stuff and then to deselect you just press alt which i again it should be your default um shortcut if not you can just go to uh others keyboard shortcuts and then find it and then do all that that that, that you need to yeah oops and so we, we uh i'm what selection does is everything in these like dotted lines it will only color in in those and i've seen a lot of people being like oh my paint style stopped working and it, it won't let me like color anywhere uh outside of of whatever right and i've had that problem before but really it was just like a really tiny dot that has been selected and i didn't see it and what you can do uh when everything kind of stops working or whatever is you can just press this thing which clears all of the selection um, this is the lasso tool. Again, select thingy, but, you know, it's lasso. Uh, this is the wand. It, it works the same way that the, that the bucket tool works, where you have uh, all these different things where you can choose working layer, selection source. Um, Anti-aliasing is, so basically, uh, as you can see, it's got like this. This is AA. And then if you compare it to a pixel brush, let me just go and find where is my binary brush there it is um so you can see there's like an obvious difference between these two so basically this one is without uh, anti-aliasing and then it's it basically just applies that to it if i press it not it you you can see that it's it's all pixely in comparison to that you see it it, it applies to it and uh, what transparency difference uh, does for uh, it, it just it's basically the same for all of these dials where this color difference or whatever it is for for, for these two uh, this is how much uh, it will ignore so let's say I have something that's like this right if my transparency difference is at zero so it tolerates zero transparency difference you see but if I put it up like uh, like here right it, it, it just ignores this entire thing because the transparency of this little circle thing that I've drawn on very lightly is so insignificant to it that it just ignores it. So the, the more higher it is, the more tolerance, uh, it, uh, the, the less tolerant it is of transparency and it just um, it like ignores it. But the, the lower it is, the, the, uh, the, the, less, the less tolerant it is of transparency and it just it catches everything. Um, usually you want to keep it near zero-ish uh, for line art, but I I personally uh, you gotta have like some nice strong line art, right? Especially if it's if it's uh, line art. So what I like to do is I like to uh, I like to keep it near here because when it's like at a zero zero, sometimes you see you see here at at these at the edges, like you you still you still get that, but. I feel like it's you see it's less when it's when it's a little it's a little higher and plus it it goes into the line art a little so you can just avoid kind of getting really messy choppy kind of selected line art stuff and it just it's it's a little nicer you don't want to go too extreme but you also don't want to go you know you don't want to go extreme on, on each end because it, it can it can just cause like quite a few problems um same same thing for bucket tool bucket tool and the and the wand tool are basically like the same in terms of its like modes and stuff. This is just to kind of move anything on your canvas. So let me just adjust them real quick and then move it. Uh, I have this uh, as V. I don't know if Paintlesci does that as a default, but whatever. Um, this is for zooming in and then zooming out. And then I have no idea what this is. Uh, don't even ask me. This is, I don't really use this, but this is to rotate your canvas um and then this is to kind of move on your canvas so you're not moving your things on your canvas but you're moving around it and i'm pretty sure the uh keyboard shortcut for this is you press space and then you just kind of drag it along and then when you're done you you let go of space and then this is your eyedropper tool which should be uh already a uh, keyboard shortcut onto your tablet as one of the uh, little button thingies and this is like very useful especially for when you're painting so you don't have to just like you know keep going and you know, figuring out colors, or if I want these two blended, right? Let me merge that down. If I want these two blended and I want this color, how do I get this color? Instead of just going here and just, uh, you just kind of quick, quickly do it by just kind of pressing the button and then you just kind of go and 
it's it's very uh time effective uh i believe and then uh i just want to go a little tip i can i guess uh when oh, like cuz uh on like while i'm drawing and stuff i like to change i like to change out like different sizes and instead of going here or going to 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 this thing over here what you can do is you can press control alt and then it'll show up this little this little thing here and as you drag along uh, obviously depending on what size and stuff like side um it changes the the brush size it also kind of depends on how how you're going so like slower is like slower usually t slower to your left is um actually i think it just depends on where you're going i think if you drag first like wherever you drag it just increases it but and then the opposite end kind of makes it smaller so you can just kind of play with that and mess around and figure it out yourself and it's also a really handy thing that kind of saves time while you're painting so let's say like you're painting a thing right and you're like oh this brush is a little too big so you put it down a little smaller and then just keep playing around with it and stuff and so that's that's also really handy another thing i wanted to to go into uh before we move along from these two little uh panels on the side is uh how to get like a perfect circle is you can go into this your line work uh press the curve tool right and i like to zoom in quite a bit and you get your mouse and then you click once oops that is it's an invisible layer i like it okay so you click once and then you get whatever shortcut it is to uh so you want to use a shortcut for this just so it turns out proper so you press once right and then you press uh usually i think it's delete and it rotates uh your canvas by one and you could just keep clicking and keep rotating until it's a full circle You see, and you got that little tiny uh, circle right there, and you're like, oh, that's really small. But since it's a vector uh, layer, no matter how much you increase it, oh, you see, I got a, I got a little thing. You kind of got to go all the way, but if it's like for a sketch or something, it'll be fine. Um, no matter how much you increase it, the quality of the circle stays, and you got you to gotta, uh, click every time you rotate. Um, you can also change the weight of uh, the thing, of the vector, by going to, to this thing. You see, I missed a little spot here. I should, probably shouldn't have gone with such a large um, brush size, but that's, that's the size point. Um, and yeah, so you can just create perfect uh, circles with this, and you can, you can make them whatever size you want, just because it is a vector and it won't affect the quality. And you have to use a curve as well, so you, you pretty much can only do this, uh, do this kind of trick in... Uh, like a vector line work layer thing because it's got the curve tool and stuff. But yeah. Um, next, we will be going into uh, these things up here. Oh, ah, before we go into those, the stabilizer. So what the stabilizer does is I will make a little kind of uh, showcase here. So what the stabilizer does, it it basically stabilizes your strokes. So I will show you. Uh, it'll be a little more clear once. Well, let's let's just jump to five and then go from there and 10 and then oops yeah whoosh, no not not four okay 15 and then 17. okay so basically what this does is it, it affects like these things at the end uh these kind of you see how it whooshes out like whoosh 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 right and it's got like the thing at the end it's like two right and then here it's more like dull oops it's more dull and it kind of just stops and it's a, it's a lot less uh it's a lot less stable than everything else and it just kind of it's very um i'd say it's a lot more organic than than these ones are or it really just depends how you use it and how shaky your hand is uh i like to play around with all of the stabilizers like my stabilizer is usually on the lower ones like anywhere ranging from zero to five i'd say and then i guess if i'm doing like something line arty or something i usually kind of amp it up a bit um everyone's like oh the s the s levels are usually like laggy so i can't use them but the thing is they are laggy like they're supposed to be laggy because they're supposed to be like really stable you see how it lags behind the the cursor you see and you see you just make one little thing and it just like whooshes like that but with this if you if you do that it, it doesn't it just kind of it stops 
So the stabilizer, everyone's like, you should probably keep it higher or you should probably keep it lower, but it's really just up to your own personal preference and how you want your uh, how you want your uh, art to to look like and how you utilize the stabilizer. Um, here, as I explained before, just navigator stuff, you just invert stuff. Um, the selection thing is so let's say you're doing something, but sometimes the selection line thing can be a little distracting, so you can just do that for the selection and you can't see it it's still there it's still there but you just can't see it and you're ignoring it um, this is to invert the selection so what you've selected it goes outside of it so that's pretty pretty nice pretty neat um, oh yeah if you if you just erase everything on the layering selections like there it'll just erase anything that's in the selection so uh, now going on into the dials at the not dials the little tabs at the top hopefully Unless I've forgotten something, have I? No. Okay. Uh, here and others, you have all this stuff. Really, uh, the most important thing that you need are keyboard shortcuts in here because this is how you kind of you can double click on these little things over here, like the brush and all that fun stuff. Um, for you know, kind of, you know, you know, uh, like you can double click it and then it'll it'll show up a thing and it's like shortcut key, a worm. Uh, and then it's like, okay, then you can put in whatever shortcut you want. You can't have two shortcuts on one thing. You see here, it's like a red because I have D on my watercolor brush and also clear layer. So I'm just gonna put clear layer to none. And you see, uh, these are uh, grayed out because they are uh, set to a, uh, they're set to a brush. So the shortcut uh, is to a brush. So you can't, you can't set brush shortcut keys uh, over here, you can only set like the the, the tool keys that you use that aren't brushes here. Uh, actually, looking at this thing, I I did forget something, and it was over here to, at this thing. So you use your X to switch out between uh, your two color things, and then this little this little fella right over here. Uh, this thing it basically turns any brush that you have into an eraser. So you see, I have this kind of blendy brush right and it adds on to color right it just adds but it also blends it's not like a colorless uh blender where it's like i just blend and that's all i do i uh, know i actually add color to it so if i put like a uh, a transparency thing it makes it it's basically the same thing except instead of adding color it's decreasing it so it's acting as an eraser so if you don't like your current eraser how it looks like and you want a certain brush to be like an eraser, like let's say this marker brush, right? This marker brush. Let's say I want it to be an eraser function. So you press that little thing, and it turns out like an eraser. And this can be this can be really useful, especially if you're using um, let's say you're losing a, using a luminosity effect, right? And the way you can turn this off is you can press it again, or you can just like color pick anything on the uh, canvas, and it'll just it'll go to that color. So it, it'll be fine and stuff, and it's just, yeah, it, it does this thing. So let's say you have all this luminosity here, right? And you're like, I want it to be like this. I want it to look like that brush, but I can't get it to look like that because what whatever reasons, right? And you can just do this, and it's really fun, and it's quite useful when you're doing art. Um, let's just get rid of those. Uh, here in your window, you basically can do everything that you put on here, but manually and stuff so uh, I don't really care for those um, you can also uh, put up the navigator you can do that manually also you can just do the paint effects like this I don't know if I showed that before um, you also have these two little options here which is cursor sh uh, show like brush brush uh, cursor size thing so basically what that does as you can see like right now it's just like this little um it's just this little cursor thing that I have right now. And then when I increase it and decrease it, it shows the, the brush size. But you can have that always on. This is more useful, uh, I feel, when I'm doing um, when I'm doing things that I kind of I kind of uh, need for like line art and stuff. I don't know. It's I sometimes put it. I used to have it on all the time, but then I realized I could like do that stuff, so you know that's fun. Um, you can also just use a dot cursor. So you see now the cursor is dot gone, and it's uh, it's just a little dot now. And then you can have both of those things, like both of those things. You can have none of those things, and it's just a tiny little dot. If you find those things uh, distracting or whatever, and you just kind of wanna, you wanna do something else. So you're just like, I don't want to see those things. I just, I just kind of want to be immersed into the thing. Whatever works for you. I feel like with all of these uh, different. Um, 
uh, mode sort of for the uh, for the cursor, I have like a, a such a different approach to how I'm doing things. So here it's a lot more like quick and like small and jittery and stuff. And then with uh, let's say with with the no, I don't need that. I need this. And then with this, it's it's a lot more like okay, I can see what what I'm doing and stuff. And uh, I really like using the dot cursor for when I'm doing the certain kind of painting technique where it's just mostly um. Where it's mostly uh, just kind of line kind of stuff. I I feel like the more I ha the more I can see the cursor, the more accurate I can I can have it displayed because I don't have like a like a display tablet thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. So yeah, that's that's pretty useful. It just whatever again, whatever floats your boat for these things. None of them's like superior than the other. It's just your preference. Um. Oops, I just uh, hit my mouse right there. Uh. Reset all window positions. That basically just makes it to the default. Uh, I guess this is the default. So let's say I have like, oops. Uh, you also you can hide them uh, if you want. And I think the default shortcut for that is tab. So you just kind of you tab and they disappear and stuff. And then uh, let's let's put this to here and then reset. Wait, what? Why aren't you reset? No, I have no idea what that does. Absolutely no idea what that does. <laughs> I thought I did. But I guess I didn't. Oh well. Um, I also just like having both of these on, on to the side because I feel like I have more room and stuff when I'm, when I'm drawing and I'm not distracted by like two things over here. It's like both of them are like on equal sides so it's nice. Also you can like uh, put them in like windowed like this and uh, there's actually to get a way to get like the windows like uh, these panels on the side windowed but I will show that at the end and not right now and you can just like put another thing open and kind of have instead of having that navigator up there but you can increase in size and stuff you can have like a so let's say e window right um and then oh no no not window view a new view and it's basically the same one. You see, it's the same. It is the same. The same. But you can kind of use it like as a as a larger navigator. So when you're painting something really close, uh, let's say you'll have this one like at a normal size, right? And so this one you'll just be. Oops. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't really like using these because I I get confused. Uh, with them easily so let's say you're like painting an eye right and you're like really close and you're like going in on the details and you don't know if it looks good or not if you don't zoom out often so you can just kind of look to the side so you know that's handy but i don't like using it so it, it's basically it's it's the same thing it's it's the same thing so don't, don't even worry about that um it, like anything you do to one canvas will apply to the other one if you do view and you because it's it's the same canvas and if you save in one then the other one will save exactly the same um so yeah moving on from window we, we're going on to view this is view it's basically just you know this thing close close all zoom in flip horizontally rotate blah blah, blah. basically kind of these tools but not really it's yeah it's whatever. It's pretty standard stuff. Filter, you you have uh, let's just put down another thing. A. Hey. So filter, you go to hue and saturation. This uh, has three little dial things. This one obviously does the hue. This one does the saturation. So you see here it's like desaturated. Here it's like the most saturated it can be of that color. And then luminosity is like you know, luminosity. And then again, you have here you have brightness, contrast, and color deepen. So contrast is just <coughs> oh, I'm just starting to lose my voice. Um, contrast is like the contrast between colors and stuff and all that fun stuff. Color deepen is how deep you want the color to be. So not deep at all is like really bright. And then deep is like oh that's a very deep blue. And then contrast again, you just kind of do that. And then brightness is kind of like luminosity, except except you know. It, it doesn't kind of do... It's basically the screen of the layer modes, except that it's useful, you know? So that's fun. And then after filter, which are this just as options, you have a selection, which is basically these two, but you also have increasement. 
So that's an interesting thing that people uh, use sometimes. I personally, if I wanna, so okay, so people use this if they want a outline around a uh, a thing, right? Around a thing. So let's say this, right? And I do selection, increase, selection, increase, selection, increase, and increases the selection, right? It in increases by one pixel. And so I, cause I don't wanna have to, Go selection, increasement, selection, increasement. I have it as a keyboard shortcut where I have it as shift and then Z. You see, I've gone to here and then selection and then selection, increasement or increasement, selection. And then I just kind of spam it until I get it to the thing I want. And then you just kind of color it in. And then you have a this nice little line art thingy around your thing. And, you know, people use that usually for like a white background thing. I know I use it for... Um, uh, my Fusion Friday line art things, and I and I put like a a uh, increasement around it, and then it, it it's like you can't see it when it's white, but like usually because sites have it like as transparent because you've saved saved it as transparent. Um, you see, boom, bada boom, bada boom. Um, then you have layer, and you you have all these uh things which are basically here and stuff. You can also flip like flip the layer. So this uh. View flips the canvas, but the layer flips the actual layer. So oh, I didn't mean to transfer it down. Whoops. Um, so let's say you want to flip on horizontally. So you can do that. But an easier way to do that is just go to the rectangly thingy, and then you can just do that, and it flips your layer. Uh, so yeah, layer is basically everything here, uh, except this. Uh, Luminance to transparency, which basically, okay, so let me just get like a random thing. So let's say uh, this entire thing is white. Like it's not transparent, but it's white. And then on top of it, I have a line art, right? Of like this person. This person is my line art, right? And then I merge it down. Or I have a picture or scan something and it's, it's basically black and white. And if I put a layer underneath, you can't see anything because the thing on top is completely it's completely white so you can't color in this this um you can't color in this this little this little person because hey the the thing is is not letting me do it because it's got a white background so what you can do is luminous transparency and it makes a uh, it makes the white transparent so now you can just go ahead and color in this little thing um this ba this only really works though with um it, with really contrasted white and black uh, liner and stuff. So if you have any colors on it, so let me just go back and redo that. So let's say I have a red on it, right? And red little cheeks. And I put this to that. It'll make them gray and tr th they'll still be transparent, but they'll be gray. So you just kind of want to keep that in mind when you're doing it. You just really want like a really clean, nice contrast between the black and the white uh, line art and stuff. So. Yeah, canvas is here. You change the canvas's resolution. So what that does is it increases everything, but it also increases everything on the the the, the canvas. And then uh, change size. It just changes size of the canvas. So you see that that changes the width. But if I were to do the resolution where it's like that, it uh you see this this is uh it it keeps the proportions. But if I were to like I don't want the proportions. You see, it does that. But usually you, you, you want to keep the proportions, so. Uh, then you have edit, undo, copy, blah, blah, blah. Pretty standard stuff, and you got your file, new, open, create from clipboard. That's anything basically that, like, let's say I want to copy this, right? Hey. Oi. All right. All right. Uh, so I've copied this, right? I have controlled uh, C. And then create from clipboard, it basically creates a canvas within, like, uh, this, uh, the size of the thing that you've... Uh, you have copied, so like from your clipboard. Then you have your recent, uh, open recent things and save, save as, export. You have uh, Sci, Photoshop, Bitmap, uh, JPEG, PNG, and then Targa. I have no idea what that is. Um, always use File Viewer, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, that's kind of basically it. Um, now I will show you how to have a windowed Sci, and that will be the end of this. And yeah. So basically, what you want to do is, uh, you want to go into where your where you have install uh install where you have Sci installed, and you want to go to uh, down to this little file called misc, and then you're gonna press misc, and then you're gonna press Control F or find it, 
and you're gonna uh, write in pop up or no yeah okay sorry pop up but like together pop up panels and then you're gonna go uh, you're gonna go down and you're gonna press uh, so instead of pop up panel zero you're gonna have pop up uh, instead of pop up panel zero you're gonna have uh, one and then you're gonna save this and then you're gonna close down your thigh no I don't wanna save you hoo big summer blowout <laughs> um, and you're gonna open your thigh and then you have all of these things as a pop up so and you can just move around however you like you can whatever whatever you want you have it as a pop up and then yeah so also you can uh, press shift tab and so basically what that does so as you can see it says uh, not save new side canvas blah blah but you can erase that uh, little layer thing uh, layer you can erase that or not erase it but you can go just like more uh, full screen in by shift tab and it'll do that and it'll hide that and then if you shift tab again it'll hide this top uh, tab thing and then you'll have like a bigger canvas but I like to have it here because I like to use my filter and stuff and I don't have shortcuts for those and I need them sometimes so you know but I don't need this because I already have this and if I want to close it I'll just yeah anyway so yeah so that's it I hope this was useful um yeah uh i hope that i didn't uh i didn't rant on too much i'll have like little timestamp thingies uh if you don't want to watch this entire thing and that's it i hope this was useful and i hope you will join me next time when i do brushes and stuff f -f 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 -f. yeah so bye bye